Good evening. I would like to call the meeting of the facility subcommittee uh, to order. Today is Tuesday, April 6th. In attendance are uh, myself, Joyce Asak, Chair, Timothy Sullivan, and Mark D'Agostino. So we have established a quorum on the agenda this evening. Oh, actually, we need to do a little tidbit here. So due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and state of emergency, on March 12th, 2020, Governor Baker issued an executive order temporarily suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20. Pursuant to the order, public bodies are temporarily relieved from the open meeting law's requirement that meetings be held in public places, open and physically accessible to the public. So long as measures are taken to ensure public access to the body's deliber deliberations through adequate alternative means. This meeting will be held and will be accessible to the public via Brockton Community Access, Brockton Public Schools website, www.bpsma.org, YouTube, and Comcast Channel 98. The public can access this meeting via this link, www.youtube.com backslash the Brockton Channels. All right, so we're going to do a roll call again. Roll call. Uh, Mr. D'Agostino? Here. Mr. Sullivan? Here. And I am present, Joyce Asak. So again, we, do, we have established a quorum. And I would like to turn the mic over to um, our superintendent. Thank you. Actually, should I read a little bit about quickly? Absolutely. Okay. So uh, we're here on, on the agenda this evening. We have uh, the, we're, we're discussing the Eldon B. Keith Memorial Field. So this is the memorial field right near the War Memorial Building on West Elm Street. So a lot of people, you know, the more we learned about this field, I was just fascinated by it. So we have a little bit of history. I'm going to be very, very quick. Um, so many of you do not know, Eldon B. Eldon B. Keith served on the school committee from 1904 to 1912. He also served on the school committee as chair from 1914 to 1919. He passed away at the age of 40 um, while he was serving, I believe it was in England, on U.S. government. That's all it says. He was on a mission. So the family had donated this field in his memory. And I gave many of you some info, some history on it. So we're here tonight because, as, you know, we've been going back and forth as to why does the school committee part of this. So obviously the, the family wanted the school committee to have pretty much full say as to what happens because he did serve on the school committee. So it, and it says right on here, the city of Brockton shall allow the school board to have sole charge of the management and use of said field for athletic games and other entertainments and purposes of a public nature as well as the school purposes. And then it says that all returns of profits realized through the use of said premises shall be applied to a fund to be designated by school board and used under its jurisdi jurisdiction in such manner as it may de designate. So um, actually I skipped number one, that the premises are to be for forever maintained and cared for by the city of Brockton in a manner satisfactory to the school board of Brockton for the purposes of an athletic field. So this is why we're here this evening to see what we're going to do with this field. Um, our superintendent um, has, you know, worked on a little project where we're trying to see what we need to do as far as get this field. So we have more fields for our, for our children of Brockton and our students to be able to use. So um, superintendent. Thank you, Ms. Azak. So if you look at um, this Google Earth picture of the, the Keith Field uh, complex, uh, to the right, um, you have um, the Boys and Girls Club and also the church um, that are the neighbors of the field. And you look at the, uh, the old baseball diamond, um, which is not used anymore. Um, so that's 50,529,000 uh, square feet, um, about 1.16 acres. Um, on the left, you see that we um, yesterday went out, and I want to thank Ken Thompson and Dr. Cobbs and Mike Clark from uh, Outside Grounds Foreman. Um, so this is the field we usually always paint for soccer. We also include football. 
So this soccer field uh, slash football field is uh, 360 feet by 200 uh, feet, and this is used, so a total of, um, actually, I'll just focus on the field right now. So that also has enough room, for obviously, for a 100-yard football field. Um, that is what the school department needs uh, to retain um, for our field to either have a football field there regulation or a regulation soccer field. That is a regulation high school and college soccer field, and obviously it's enough room for a, a football field as well. Um, so the 82,800 square feet, that's the total with the field, the playing surface, and also the out-of-bounds. We left 10 yards uh, out-of-bounds on the right side, and then on the left, um, it goes over to the War Memorial Building, um, where you would be able to put bleachers. Uh, so that's the current need uh, um, of a field. We use this field often um, for uh, football, youth football programs, adult football programs, adult soccer programs, and youth, foot, uh, youth soccer programs. So uh, the Keith field is used often, uh, and it, you know, it, it needs to be a regulation soccer and football field. Um, and one uh, thing we added, because uh, uh, Ms. Azak asked, um, we did measure, as you know, the history that she spoke about of the eagles that are at the entrance on the pillars, uh, which are on um, um, West Elm Street. So from the corner, as you see the, the church the, um, with the red roof, um, from the corner of that um, where the fence starts, which is still school department, uh, school department city property, from the corner of that to um, the first eagle, it's 105 feet. And to the second eagle, it's 145 feet. Um, so that was measured today. Um, so this is, again, this is a rough draft, um, but these numbers of the acres and the number of um, the acreage and the number of the square feet, is, that's accurate. Those numbers uh, were hand measured, um, and that's exactly what the measurements are that is needed for to maintain a, um, a soccer field with space for out of bounds and space for bleaches in a football field. I just have a quick question, Superintendent. So I actually didn't mention it in, this, um, in the meeting this evening, but uh, back in the 20s, I believe, is when that arch, um, the entrance with the two eagles and the plaque for Eldon B. Keith. So I, I, you know, I spoke with the superintendent. I just said that we need to preserve the history of the meaning of the donation of that park. Um, the family donated it for a reason, and that's why we need to, whatever we do, we need to preserve that entrance. Um, it is part of Brockton history. So when he gave us the measurements, um, I just want to make sure that was carved out. So when we carve that out, will we see that in the drone? Yep. What did, okay. So we just wanted to make sure we preserve that. No matter what we do, just preserve that piece of our history. Um, so I think we're good. Did you have any other questions? or Anyone have any questions for the superintendent? So, yeah. The, I'm just trying to make sure that I'm looking at this correctly. So the, the eagles at that entrance, are they, are they on the soccer side or are they on the other side They're here? They're on the baseball side. That's what I thought, right? That's that opening that I see there? Unless you see like it's a little, little yellow line. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, so that's where those are. Um, and obviously we want to make sure that we maintain, certainly maintain that section so that that you know, piece of, of the history uh, is maintained in our control. And that's what I gave everyone this, well, the, the members this evening is, um, you know, the more research we did, that there's just a lot of history there. And it just <clears> explains <throat> everything from, you know, the two eagles that I always saw were identical to the, the way the bricks were laid, to the plaque, to the, the wreath. There's just a lot, and it's, it's really interesting. So a lot went into that back in the 20s. It's been there for so long. We definitely just need to preserve that as part of our Brockton history. So whatever we do, um, that is just very important. Because I know over the years they had taken down two of the larger pillars, if you look at some of the pictures. Mm -hmm. So, um, Mr. Sullivan, any questions or? Yes, I, I was just wondering what's, what is going on? Why is this all being done all of a sudden? Um, I believe we're trying to get the turf over there and in order to get the turf we need to carve out what we need um, and that's why the superintendent and some of our facilities 
um, worked on it just to carve out what we need and then we have um, our attorney Peter Mello to address us a, a little bit later. Okay. Well, and if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the, the council voted to declare the whole thing surplus, which requires some sort of response from us of some kind at some point. You know, I think originally it was like 1.7, which is, you know, 1.7 acres, and we're down to, I believe, one point, just a little over an acre. Right. So we, we, you know, to be able to do what we're doing here, the school department feels that we need more of, of that uh, field than we realized till we started measuring things out. Um, especially, and I'm not sure about the other members, but every time I drive by, there's always somebody. There's oh, always yeah. a group that's there. Um, and actually, you know, especially when it comes to trying to rent out space or trying to rent out the fields at the high school, that's always booked. It gives us an opportunity to use another large field, which will, um, you know, a lot of teams want to wanna practice. They want to get into the city. So, um, and it actually, it's a positive. Ma the Madam, positive. Madam Chair, sure. if, if I could just give some point of information sure. um, to Mr. Sullivan. Um, before I became mayor, again, I was a member of the city council and Mayor Rodriguez um, had authorized a plan, which I know the superintendent provided to you. Um, there was a bonding authorization that I voted on as a member of the city council relative to uh, what Moses did at that time, which is this original plan. Uh, that bonding authorization is still valid. Um, so this has been in the queue for a previous administration. Um, the city council in November, I believe, late November, took a vote um, to authorize it. Um, attorney Mello, along with my city solicitor, Megan Bridges, and the city council's attorney, Shannon Resnick, have been working diligently on this. But I do want to just let you know that I stepped outside with, with uh, attorney Mello, and I concur with what Joyce, Joyce said. There should be a carve out, meaning that portion of, of where the eagles are, in my humble opinion, should be reserved. Um, so it would be part of the, the um, school slash city field. Um, that way, you know, visitors could walk in that way. Um, but again, Attorney Mello was here, and I know he's been working diligently with the chairwoman. Um, but again, this is something that um, legally, um, when it's a municipal owned uh, piece of property, locus, you have to deem it surplus. Uh, if you if you feel that it's appropriate the City Council took that vote in November and, and that's why it's been in facilities for a while mr. Sullivan thank you thank you thank you so on the screen now uh, sorry go ahead mr. Yars. I, just a quick thing um, you know obviously we're looking at the rendering that I believe um, former mayor Rodriguez had done um, and and obviously this is the aerial drone um, photo it, and it's hard to tell looking at such different you know documents the field that that's on this document is that basically in the same place yeah, it's just um under um, the one that former mayor rodriguez did um, the field is a little bit smaller um the fields which one the one the one that he that he can i have that? this one second. the one okay. that's up so on the, the screen from mayor rodriguez has the field at um a hundred and ninety five feet by three hundred and fifty okay so that um, one's we, a little we, long, yeah it is, it's not it's all it's only off it's five we we need it at 200 feet which is only five feet off from this rendering and then um, 10 feet um, more on the length uh, he they had it at 350 and again this was something that you know mayor Rodriguez didn't do we had a company do this so right um, so basically they the, the dimensions you see on here is for high school soccer we added here just because a lot of our um, adult programs want to have um, soccer and use turf so we wanted to you know we have the space so we figured that you know yep. let's make it big enough so um, not only can we have high school and youth games there we can also have adults as well so the community right. can well can the reason I the field the reason I asked was and I guess I should have been more direct in my question the the mayor Rodriguez drawing has some bleachers in it do we have room on on this version if yeah, this if was what look, we were to do there's you enough look room to the left of soccer where it's a soccer yep. field and you look at that tree line yeah that's where the bleach is. there's enough room there okay Plenty. I just want to make sure there was enough room there it's you know between out of bounds and between the um, war memorial right that side just to, if I could again I'm um, through you chair um, you know if if 
the facilities committee um, members decide that this is an appropriate vote and it comes out favorable uh, to the full committee. I, I, I would tell you that um, the school facilities, the building commissioner, Jim Plouffe, uh, of course, all the lawyers would need to, to continue to work on this to really hone it in, probably having a, a, a surveyor with the meets and bounds as well. Um, some of this land is recorded land, some of this land is registered land, so land court will need to get involved, and, and Attorney Mello can share with that. Um, I will tell you, though, under procurement law, um, we would put an RFP. Um, the city procurement officer, Mike Morris, put an RFP on the street, and I've said this to everybody. It has to be uh, under the letter of the law, and if anybody applies, uh, we, the standard is what's in the best use and best uh, um, uh, standard for the city. So again, we all concur that the intent of the Keith family was to have this as a field for the youth of Brockton, and, and that's what we're going to honor uh, regardless. And if nobody bids on an RFP, nobody bids, but uh, we, uh, we need to, to dot the I's and cross the T's on this. Thank you. Thank you. I absolutely agree with you, Mayor. Um, so right now, if no one has any other questions, I can turn this over to um, Attorney Peter Mello. It, here's it. Uh, oh, we can just give him the microphone, Mark. Yeah, whatever the preference. Can you hear me okay now? Yep. Is, is it okay with the mask? or sh You can hear me? Okay. Um, so, no, I, this is precisely the exercise I think that the subcommittee needs to undertake tonight. I mean, to, to reinforce um, w what the mayor said, I, ultimately, before the school committee votes, uh, this area, the area that would be essentially forfeited or, or relinquished uh, back to the city for potential disposition would need to be, um, I think, depicted very and delineated very precisely and specifically in a, in a survey plan or a meets and bounds description, and, um, and that can be achieved. Um, you know, I, the, as, as Superintendent Thomas mentioned, I think the, the, um, the, the BPS staff did a phenomenal job of putting this aerial depiction together. And I think it probably pretty, it's pretty close, um, candidly, as my sense. I, I do think it would be prudent to, um, to, to get it vetted by a design professional, um, perhaps the same firm that, that created the initial uh, renderings, just to confirm that we've secured sufficient space, for example, to ensure compliance with ADA requirements uh, or setback requirements and the like, and, and as the mayor alluded to, um, it's, it's, I think, critical to get the building department's um, eyes on it, you know, to make sure that everyone's on the same page and to make sure that whatever, whatever ultimately, if the school committee de determines that it no longer needs the space, that it, that it very carefully and precisely delineates the space and ensures that it's secured and, and retained everything that it needs for its, its purposes. Um, so, and, and just, to, I think it's clear, I think everyone uh, understands this, but just to be crystal clear about it, um, you know, in terms of the genesis and how we got to where we are, the, you know, obviously the school committee controls a lot of property in the city, including this, this piece of land, and um, the city council voted back in December to declare it surplus, and, and I think everyone understands the, the effect of that vote, but again, to be clear, that didn't, uh, that vote didn't mandate or require the conveyance of all or any portion of this property. It just basically paved the way for the property to be sold subject to the school committee's approval. Um, it's a, it was a procedural requirement under the procurement statute, General Laws Chapter 30B, Section 16, which is the, the section that governs the disposition of real estate. Um, and ultimately, you know, that has, has uh, set the table, so to speak, for the school committee to take a vote under a separate statute, General Laws Chapter 40, Section 15A. And that statute, I'm paraphrasing, but it basically says that when a committee or a board controls property that it can declare um, or, or determine that all or some portion of it is no longer needed for its purpose, that triggers, uh, it basically puts the ball in the city council's court to, to accept essentially the, the return of the property and then that um, would allow the city to, to dispose of it through an RFP process, as the, as the mayor mentioned. So um, I, I think that actually the, the subcommittee's covered this really well tonight and, and gone through exactly the exercise that it needs to go through, which is to determine 
um, how it's whether uh, what, what recommendation it wants to make to the school committee uh, basically whether and how to um, take the uh, the vote under 15a um, I think that for purposes of tonight's vote this aerial depiction is sufficient so long as the the vote is framed in such a way as to allow the, the school committee latitude to you know uh, make adjustments to the depiction based on a, a survey plan or a meets and bounds description um, and I but I think that the fundamentally the, the, the objective here is to decide what the school committee or, or you know what the, the school department wants to retain um, and and that's the endeavor so I'm happy to address any questions obviously well, I just, for the members that um, were not aware up until this evening, so uh, probably not too long ago, I, I met briefly with the superintendent. You know, we were looking at this blindly. We we're looking at a piece, a lot, and it's hard to really uh, look at the lot and, and realize how big of a lot it is. So, you know, we had recommended getting it surveyed, so we did. Um, you know, our superintendent got it, uh, got a, I believe it was a plot plan, so we started from there which brought us here, uh, you know, within the past week, week and a half, we've been working on just getting, you know, some of the footage The, you know, they were painting the, the lines and our facilities has been out there for the past, I think, few days uh, trying to prepare so we can actually see. Looking at a, you know, green space, it's hard to tell without actually looking at the lines to see where the boundaries are, uh, to see what we actually need. So, I mean, thank you and thank you to facilities um, for getting us ready for this evening's meeting. Um, you know, from here forward, I agree we should, if everything goes well, you know, bring in an engineer and really plan this out. You know, this is what we need, uh, get, it, get it done. And um, so anyone have any questions for um, Attorney Mello? I mean, we are, I think there was a little bit of confusion as to whether or not this stayed with us or went to the city because I've had some constituents reach out and that's why we're here this evening because under 15A, we still have the, I don't want to really say power, but we still have the right um, as to say what happens with this, this lot. Um, and that's where a little bit of the, not really confusion, but a lot of just, you know, to try to figure out what's going on. Is it with the school committee or is it with the city? So we're gonna work well together and we're just gonna try to get this accomplished. Sullivan? Just one quick, I don't know if it's for you, Mr. Mello, or the mayor, but the, it's just hard to understand that the city council voted last November to, he called it surplus land, and now all of a sudden we're talking about putting a field in there. Right, I, so I, subject to the, um, I don't want to, uh, if you wanted to chime in, um, subject to the mayor's thoughts, but, what that um, what that vote was was a, was a vote under General Laws Chapter 30B, Section 16, uh, to declare property surplus. It's a it's a procedural requirement in order to um, undertake a, a RFP or or land disposition process under that statute. So in order to make property available for disposition through a bid process. That statute, General Laws Chapter 30B, Section 16, requires that the authorized body from the city uh, take a vote. And I, I think there's a parallel provision in the city's code of ordinances that imposes essentially the, the identical requirement. And um, it's, a, it's a procedural requirement. It did not, as I mentioned, mandate by any means the disposition of this property. It simply Know, basically satisfied a procedural step under 30B to set the table to do that subject to the school committee's approval. Again, the school committee, um, now the ball's in the school committee's court, so to speak, to, to determine whether it wants to, you know, make a determination that some portion of this property um, is no longer needed for its purpose. It certainly doesn't have to do that. It doesn't have to, it doesn't have to make that determination with respect to any portion of the property, um, but it can, and I think what this subcommittee's function to do, as I understand it, the, 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 the full committee tasked this subcommittee with making a, a recommendation about how to proceed on this issue. So the task before this subcommittee is to determine 
what recommendation it's going to provide to the full school committee about whether and how to vote under Section 15A with respect to this property. In other words, do we want to do we want to make a determination that any of it is no longer needed? Do we want to secure the, the whole thing? Do we want to keep it all? Do we want to segregate some portion of it? Um, and if we do want to segregate a portion of it and determine that some of it's no longer needed for its purpose, what portion do we want to keep? And what portion do we want to forfeit? So that's, that's the, I think that's the undertaking. So, um, and that, that's sort of the exercise we've been going through is deciding what we need for the field that we want and making a recommendation to the school committee uh, along those lines. So, just to make it clear, what on this, what land are you talking about? So, the, 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 the just to, yeah, no, um, I appreciate the question. So, the and I don't know the the exact uh, measurement of the property in question. It's approximately five acres. Is the, the Keith Field, um, right. you know, for lack of a better term, property? It's a lot. That comprises approximately five acres. So this, what I think the aerial depiction that was on the screen a, a few minutes ago depicted was, was um, that the the school committee would. I don't know if you have it in front of you. Maybe it's I'm easy to orient. Showing him the okay. second one. Um, okay. With the fifty thousand five twenty nine point six square feet. Right. That's the part that they carved out, Mr. Sullivan. Preliminarily, and again, I think what. The mayor pointed out, and it sounded, it, it seemed as though um, you know others had a similar sentiment, is that this probably would would uh, be further refined even to to ensure that the property that's retained would fully encompass the entrance, those gates with the with the beautiful eagles at the entrance, because it's a you know I think you can tell it might take you a minute to orient yourself um, with the aerial shot, but. The that gated entrance is actually in this aerial image depicted on um, on the side or on the portion that that would be uh, potentially relinquished. Um, so I think that the idea is that it pro this plan probably would or this depiction would be revised so that you know it it would fully encompass that gated entrance. In, in the portion of the property that the school committee would retain. So again, it, you know, any vote, should the subcommittee vote tonight to recommend that the school, the full school committee vote under 15A to relinquish some portion of the property, I think it would be prudent for the vote to be framed so as to allow the school committee some latitude to adjust the precise um, measurements of the of the property to to be you know relinquished meets and bounds for example um a, you know a, a, um, an accurate um recitation of the exact you know distances like you know x number of feet from the from the corner of the property you know and the like that's how property descriptions are laid out in recorded uh title documents for example a deed and the like you know that that actually establish and serve as the basis for land transactions i think a similar description should be made with respect to this vote ultimately by the school committee and um, i'm well aware that uh, an rfp has to go out if the rfp is on that 1.16 acres is that what we're talking about again on the but, right. So potentially, the if the school committee ultimately, and and just so it's clear, the, the vote tonight isn't isn't a definitive final vote to relinquish. That's the that's the uh, that would be the subject of a, a future vote by the school committee. The, the objective tonight is to make a recommendation to the school committee. Um, but yeah, if the, what you see here in this 1.16 acres swath, so to speak is a depiction preliminarily of what would be relinquished what the school committee would say we no longer need okay but it, but again just because this is an important point and I, I if, if mayor sullivan if you'd like to um to elaborate i think this the feeling is if i'm you know based on tonight's discussion that this aerial depiction on the screen would be further revised so that um the gated entrance there in the right corner of that image 
would be fully encompassed within the portion of the property that the school committee would retain. So in other words, the school committee would retain control over that space where the entrance is, where the gated you know, eagles are. Um, that's what you currently see on the, on the screen there is an aerial image that, that shows that gated entrance on the side that um, would be proposed to be relinquished. So I think that, that needs to be tweaked. Okay, thank you. We're not, uh, Mr. D'Agostino. So, um, Attorney Mello, what would a motion on this matter look like? Is it a- I have it, Mr. D'Agostino. you have it? Yes, I oh, do. Great. So I was gonna, um, any, any other questions? Um, Cause we're not looking for a vote this evening. Um, Mr. Sullivan, did you have a question or? No. Okay. So um, I'm looking for a motion to move that the facility subcommittee recommend that the school committee vote pursuant to MGL chapter 40, section 15A to determine to be no longer needed for its purpose that portion, that portion of the Keith Field property, com com I can't even talk, comprising approximately 50,529.6 square feet as is generally depicted in the aerial image provided to this committee for tonight's meeting. Subject to any modifications that the school committee might make in its discretion according to a survey or other plan of land or meets and bounds description. I'll make that motion. And can I get a second? Second. So Mr. D'Agostino uh, made the motion. It's seconded by Mr. Sullivan. Um, Ms. Azak, if I can just. Oh, sure. Just, um, yeah, I think it's clear, but just so it's crystal clear to everybody that that, that 50,529.6 square foot swath obviously would be adjusted downward if you amended it as we just described a few minutes ago to, to you know, basically retain the area in front of those gates. So, so just, I just estimated? wanted that to be clear, everyone. Yeah, I mean. I mean it says approximately. So. Yeah, right, right, right. Okay. Okay, so um, a motion was made by Mr. D'Agostino, seconded by Mr. Um, Sullivan. All in favor? Mr. D'Agostino? Um, oh, sorry, roll call. Mr. D'Agostino? Yes. <coughs> Mr. Sullivan? Yes. And I am a yes. Motion carries unanimously. Um, I don't believe we have anything unfinished. Are we good? Oh, uh, Superintendent. Right, I'll be quick. On the facilities, um, sure. the um, Dr. Cobbs, um, who um, got word uh, from the MSBA um, that um, we were not welcome into the core program for Brockton High School, and we've been encouraged to reapply. And I'll have much more information on that at the next um, facility subcommittee meeting. Uh, we're waiting for um, a meeting for the MSBA. Uh, with them to get more details about uh, why we were not put forward. But um, initial uh, is our application was great, um, but this being our first year applying, um, other schools that have been waiting in the queue for eight years, some up to six, some up to eight years, uh, were put forward and this being our first year um, had something to do with us not being put forward, but I'll have much more information uh, when we meet with the MSBA later this week. So I just wanted to bring that up on the new business so the committee knew. Okay. Um, actually, before we adjourn, should we schedule um, another uh, facilities meeting while we're here? Get one, um, schedule it. I ran some dates. Um, I was looking at May 3rd. That should give us enough time um, to get Is it the 4th? Is I'm it, sorry, is, is it May 4th? Is it Tuesday 4th? the 4th? Uh, so Tuesday the 4th, if that works with everyone, that gives us plenty of time to get some um, some more information and, and get some things done to get this moving. <laughs> does that work out? Mr. Sullivan, does the 4th work for you? Yes, it does. Okay, and Mr. Jackson, and myself. Um, okay, so we're going to schedule the next facilities meeting for the 4th, um, and we'll have Attorney Mello with us um, if we need um, Attorney Mello. Sure. Yeah, Perfect. Absolutely. Okay. Do you have so, a time yet on that? I'm sorry. The time. Um, we're gonna. We'll, we can finalize the time within like the next week or so. We just have to see what else is going on that evening. Okay. Um, but either before our meeting or after our meeting. 
So most likely before our school committee meeting if we have one that evening. Um, so can I get a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay, motion's been made by Mr. Sullivan, seconded by Mr. DiAgostino. Uh, meeting adjourned. A roll call. Mr. Mr. DiAgostino? Yes. Mr. Sullivan? Yes. Okay, motion uh, meeting adjourned. Thank you.